This is Weeping Woman by Picasso. You notice the eyes are both sides of the face. It's pretty odd, isn't it? Well, look at this guy. His eyes are on both sides of the face too. It's a flounder. This is me drawing a flounder by the sea. This is a flounder stuck in a plastic container. He's not happy. In fact, he hates it. Look at the expression on his face. He absolutely hates it. Here's a picture that I'm going to use as a reference for today's drawing. To us today, I'm going to teach you how to draw a flounder. So we're going to start off with a square. No, we're not. We're going to start off with a circle. There we go, a circle. No, no, we'll do it a square. Let's make it a square. No, no, let's make it a circle. Let's make it a squarish circle. Yes. And we're going to draw the body in there as well. So it's a sort of a squarish circle, if that makes sense. There's an oval in the centre here. That oval centre is the actual body. The bits out the side there, which is almost making up a square, is the actual fins. Going to put a bit in here for the tail. So it sort of pinches in there and it's a nice little fan out there. We're using a few shapes here. A circle here, this is where the head's going to be. And a couple of eyes, those weird eyes on one side of the body. And the mouth. You know, if you turn it over on the other side, it's almost exactly the same, just without the eyes. There's a bit I like. See this? It goes around here and then curves around to go into that side petrol fin. Funny little eyes. Sad little face. And it's got eyes both sides of one side of its face, just like a Picasso picture. But it wasn't born this way. It was actually born with eyes both sides of the head. But after about six months or so, one eye starts migrating to the other side of the face. In fact, it, you, it would swim upright, but by the time those eyes start migrating, it starts laying on the bottom of the sea and in the sandy patches where it can hide. Now, I love these little bits here. I'm doing the fins, and the fin just under its chin sort of comes out like a little beard. So, just some lines through here, a few guidelines. I'm going to get too carried away because I'm going to ink it. So it sort of comes over there, see this little gap, that's where the fins start there. And around we go. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Work on that tail a little bit. There we go. And I'm concentrating on the fins there. Those fins are really flexible, you know, the spikes are really flexible. That's what amazes me. Now, some good old Indian ink. I'm using Winsor & Newton Indian ink. I'm using a paintbrush. A paintbrush is going to make artwork just look a little bit more cartoony or a little bit more like an illustration. It makes it nice and bold and strong. And so if you're not used to doing it bold and strong, you should try a paintbrush and give it a go. It can be seen from across the room. Let's just put on some fast music, speed this up. You can pause it and follow along if you want. Or you can ink it yourself. Inking and drawing are just two separate things, really. Sometimes in the cartoon world, they're given to two different people to do. Then you should always rotate your page too to make it easier to draw, especially when you're inking, because you're sort of dragging the brush. So the way I'm holding the brush is how the way you'd hold a, a pen sign your name. And so that's why I moved around. There's a natural curve that happens there. Time to pop a bit of camouflage on him. A few dots here, followed by a few little circles. Looks like he's got the measles. Oh, work out when I put the sort of the gritty sand in the background. So here we go, we're going to pop some shade underneath. This is going to make it look like it's sitting on the ground or sitting on the bottom of the sea, hopefully. So a few specks here and there. Of course, when he does get under the water he usually gets right under the sand. I 
So I'm using sort of little curved dashes and dots, sort of a mixture of both. So there's no real cross hatching here, there's no real stippling, so I like the cross between both. Builds up a nice texture. And we want our flounder to look like it's just sitting on the bottom of the ocean there. Actually going to stipple a few bits, make it a little bit more three-dimensional, even though it's, it's a two-dimensional creature, pretty much. It's like a relief sculpture. I might also put a few dots um, maybe on the underside there. This is sort of stippling now, and stippling seems to work well to describe the flounder, so I don't want to bother putting cross-hatching on it. Just bold lines or a few dot lines. So just here and a stipple. So like I said before, I've sped up some parts of this tutorial. If you want to pause it and uh, catch up, that's fine. Or like I say, you can sort of go your own way with inking. It's a very personal thing. You can make it your own. Try a few things, experiment a bit. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Time to get rid of this disgruntled flounder. Poor little guy, they release him back. I can just tell by the expression on his face that he hates being in there. Let's see, okay, he's disappeared.